So this speech is about my master work, um, comparing the classical offset Gregorian versus the symmetric prime focus reflector antenna specifically for 21 centimeter intensity mapping. So a quick overview of the speech is I'm going to give a motivation why you would want to compare these configurations and the benefits of doing this in general for 21 centimeter nap, um, mapping. Quickly go through different reflector configurations, go through using Hyrax as a case study for this. Um, the methodology used numerical electromagnetic solvers, some simulations and results and conclusions. Just to know this is still a work in progress, so there's still some outstanding details. So 21 centimeter intensity holds the potential for constraining cosmological parameters by being able to map large structures at intermediate re re redshift. This endeavor, however, is not without challenges. The foreground is several magnitudes larger than a 21 centimeter signal. What makes it possible to remove this foreground is because the foreground varies smoothly over the frequency and remains correlated, while the 21 centimeter varies rapidly and decorrelates. One of the limiting factors, however, to do this will be mostly um, systematic errors, such as the instrumental effects. These effects will cause mixing of the modes which will make it a lot harder to remove this foreground. Now, one of the challenges is how do we actually see how these um, configurations um, can be compared to see how they mix. Because so you either want to design, so you have extremely well characterized instrumental effects or have the mixing in such a way that they can be well defined and undone or completely avoided. So here is a um, quick slide that shows summary of the most classic configurations. So the first choice that you are faced with when making this decision is will you have a single or dual reflector? So a single reflector just has one main reflector and while the dual reflector has a main reflector and um, sub-reflector. So your most simplistic configuration will then be your, your um, single prime fit reflector. While your more complicated configurations is of course like your Cassegrain and your Gregorian, where the Cassegrain has a convex hyperbloid sub-reflector while the Gregorian has an ellipsoid sub-reflector. But how do you know how well they will perform specifically for 21 centimeter mapping? Well, this speech will focus mostly on the primary FET reflector and then the Gregorian. But what are the inherent advantages of doing a dual reflector design? So first off, when you have this prime reflector, you'll have the feed here, which will cause aperture blockage. As you can see, we'll have this effect but you will also have standing waves because some of the waves will reflect between the feet and the reflector. And this will cause higher side lobes. Now, you would think the first thing you'll think, okay, cool, well, what if we just move this feed to an off axis position? Now, this will definitely reduce your side lobe, but one of the biggest problems with doing an offset design is that you introduce polarization because of the inherent asymmetry. So for example, if you have the symmetric prime focus reflector here, your currents will be parallel in the aperture plane. But now, for example, if you have an expolarized offset single reflector, then this will cause a, cur a curve in the current, as you can see here. And then, of course, this can then be decomposed into X and Y components, which will then be your which will then give you um, cross polarization. So your reflectors can virtually eliminate geometric optic cross polarization under one condition, however. It's just justified by the Mitch-Gitchi condition, which is stated below here. So polarization char characteristics depends on the depth and the symmetry of the reflector um, and also the quality of the feed and the the depth of this or of the reflector can be expressed by looking at the, at the magnification of your reflectors. So in this case, E here is the eccentricity of your 
sub reflector, beta is the angle between the sub and the main reflector, and alpha is the angle between the feed axis and the sub reflector. Some other advantages of doing a dual reflector antenna is that it's easy to access the feed and also it reduces noise from the ground. And then you also have the possibility of shaping your reflectors. So you can see there's a lot of parameters here, different angles, different lengths. Um, so there's 21 parameters in total, um, geometric condition, well, 21 geometric parameters defined by Grenet in his 2003 paper. Then he gives eight options of five different free parameters that you can use to get closed, closed loop equations for these parameters. However, they're not very convenient parameters. So the free parameters I used is the same as what Meerkat used to determine their geometry of their offset Gregorian. So the free parameters that I said is the projected diameter of the main reflector, the subtended angle, then the length from the feet to the subreflector bottom edge, and the length from the subreflector edge to the upper edge of the main reflector. This also advantage because now this will be very similar to the lengths of your struts you'll use this configuration. So it gives you more of a intuitive parameters that you can set and you'll you can imagine much easier how to look than setting one of these angles um, and seeing the quickly the relationship between all of the other parameters. For this specific study, I'm looking at Hyrax as my case study. So I specifically this design, um, which have as a diameter of six meters and to F over D, so focus over diameter of 0 0.25 and then I'm working in the operating frequency of 400 to 800 megahertz. And I'm making an offset Gregorian that will give you the same collection, collection area as if it was in the same array set up. So I'm using the same diameter for my main reflector. So quickly going through the methodology to get to a place where I can apply a figure of merit of comparing these two antennas. For example, yeah, if, if you have the offset Gregorian, so you'll choose your input parameters and the MATLAB script will then calculate the rest of the parameters. And then I'm using both GRASP, GRASP model and a CST model and the simulations run, runs and then you export this data, do a flat sky approximation, which I'll explain later. Then you'll convolve this with a sky power spectrum and then apply the figure of merit that Martin will explain the underlying math for in the next, next speech. So now a very important question is what solvers should you be using to solve these problems? Because you can have completely wrong results because you used, or it can take very much longer than it should if you're using the wrong solvers. So the basic of electromagnetics is of course the famous Maxwell equations, which are partial dif differential equations. And the solutions can be solved by solving a boundary value problem, such as using the finite difference time domain method. Or you can change those partial differential equations to the integral equation and have um, use methods such as MOM. Um, most reflector, designers will be tempted the, to use physical optics or geometric optics, which physical optics ut utilizes the ray optics to predict the current on the surface of the large metallic surface, such as our reflector, and then calculate the scattering radiation from the surface of the structure by integrating those fields over the surface. But because this um, reflectors we're using is electrically small, so in other words, in terms of wavelengths, they're tiny. So you won't usually use PO if your reflectors are smaller than 10 wavelengths. So for my simulations, I use both CSD and GRASP. So in CSD specifically, the FDT method and for GRASP, the MOM solver. Now GRASP is a specialized software for antenna design, so it's very convenient to use. 
while CSD is a bit more general um, simulation software. Um, so this offset Gregorian still needs to be um, optimized, but just to visualize some results. So here you can see the principal cuts as they change over frequency. You can see the side lobes varying quite a lot over frequency range, also getting a bit bigger, but there's still some asymmetry in offset Gregorian. And then also some tree view plots. So those who aren't familiar with tree view plots, there's just an example of how the earth would look projected if projected with a tree view graph. So now to actually get to something that you can convolve with sky, you read in the e-field data specifically defined at with their um, polarization specifically defined for um, Ludwig's third definition. Then you'll do a stereographic projection of this field. So it's basically just taking it from a unit sphere and projecting it onto a flat infinite plane. Then interpolate using a cubic spline. Um, because stereographic projection is a conformal mapping, you still have to and it doesn't preserve area, you still need to do a correction factor for the area. And then you can use windowing. Um, and then calculate the power intensity, which is just one over twice the free impedance times the copolar co squared plus the cross color squared. And then you can take this and do a false Fourier transform. Um, this windowing specifically cuts out the, the far side lobes. So the flat sky approximation of the beam actually still holds. In conclusion, this work focuses, the focuses on developing a tool for antenna engineers to estimate the instrumental effect of 21 centimeter intensity mapping without end-to-end -end simulations. So it's a lot quicker to iterate through different configurations before spending a lot of time um, setting up an entire simulation to determine if it's gonna work or not. And then you can also compare these different configurations by using a figure of merit to select the best fit for purpose. So you know it's gonna work for the specific purpose that you want it to work for. Now, in the future, you can work to use this to optimize reflector fee configuration to reduce this instrumental effect. Uh, so Martin will give more details about where this figure of merit comes in and how it interacts again with these antenna patterns. Uh, thank you, Carla. Um, so, do you do you want questions right now, or do you want? Uh, I think, I think it's more... better if Martin goes first. Okay. Do you want to just answer the question in the chat box? Yeah, Boom already asked a question, so okay, go ahead, Martin, please. Oh, okay. Me. Let's see. Um, sorry, I can read it out. If, uh, is um, can you quickly read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Boom is asking, is asymmetry in the response uh, pattern inherent to an offset design? Um, yes, because it's asymmetrical. So it's the asymmetry that causes that cross polarization. Yeah, he, um, he's also saying this is just FYI for Hera, MWA, and LOFAR. We usually use Blackman Harris and a variant of that. So maybe look into that. Yeah, okay, cool. Of window function, yeah. Just one comment about the question. So if you go to the um, um, mm -hmm. paper by Dragone, <laughs> um, 
which I think is from the 1970s. It's, yeah, it's really know, old. <laughs> on the slide. But um, this condition comes from uh, geometric optics. And um, one of the sort of tricks in this paper, which is a really nice paper, I highly recommend it, is he takes the two mirrors and then he um, uh, um, finds an equivalent one mirror configuration. And um, in that, um, so uh, can, t these two mirror configurations are equivalent to a paraboloid with a feed at the prime focus. So that means that at a certain level, there isn't as much asymmetry as one might think in the um, off-axis configuration. Of course, diffraction kind of spoils this to some extent, but that's mm. just sort of an interesting aside. So if you actually do full simulations of this using, for example, the MOM method, you will still have cross polarization that comes in um, since when it's getting as small as we're working with, it's going a bit further than the geometric optics um, limits. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. Anyway, if something Sorry. fails at geometric optics, you um, generally if, don't expect a diffraction to save you. <laughs> <laughs> Basically how this works is you can um, convert this to equivalent parabolic configuration. Hmm. So when that works and that um, equivalent um, on-axis parabolic equation looks correct, then the condition works. 